Hey everybody, today is July 5th. This is the KCP community meeting. I'm gonna go ahead and paste the link to our GitHub issue for today's meeting into chat. And if you have any items you'd like to add to the agenda, please add comments to this issue and we will get started. So we'll leave the incoming issues and milestone review to the end of the meeting, assuming time permits. and. Uh, go into the first one from Stefan about uh, Chojian's placement PR. So Stefan, you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, just a shout out. He's not here, so he did great work. It merged this morning, which means we have a placement API now, which means you get a default placement object in your workspaces. It's cluster scoped. It has a namespace selector, so you can choose which namespaces it uh, covers. It can have multiple placement objects. Each can select a location, a different one. Each location gets a cluster, which means you can have multiple clusters now per namespace. So everybody who is working on those multi-cluster topics, this is a way to to uh, to get them. And um, yeah, this default placement is created. But you can delete it. It's not recreated, so it will remember when it was there and deleted. Um, and there's also some label annotation I forgot it's described in the API to avoid the default placement. So if you have GitOps or anything like that, and you you don't like a default placement, but you want another one, a different name, that's also possible. So play with it. It merged has end-to-end -end tests, obviously, but beyond that, it's not much tested, I guess. But it's very worth to to explore. Do you know if um, he's planning on doing any sort of demo uh, to show it off? We haven't we haven't talked about that. There are um, a couple end to end tests missing uh, around what happens if locations overlap. You have to so there should be something like anti affinity between placements. So there are some things which are still. Uh, work in progress, and I guess he's busy with those for a couple of days. But then I hope he will do it again. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm excited to take a look at it. Um, anybody have any questions, uh, comments about KCP, questions about workspaces, placement, scheduling, APIs, and so on? Um, any any question in general is now is a good time to bring it up. Uh, if not. I will move into triage for issues. All right, uh, today might be a fast, quick call then. So we have 14 issues that we haven't triaged. I'm going to start at the oldest. Uh, again, for triage, we're just trying to assign a milestone. So, um, David, you are here. Yes. Sure. Uh, so, in terms of, of like due date for this, is this uh, basically TBD? Yeah, theoretically, this would be an outcome, an expected outcome of the uh, from uh, at the end of the you know user homework space work, because the whole point of user homework space is to be able to clean up all the personal workspace related stuff. But I still credit that as a distinct issue because possibly according to you know timeline and deadlines we might want to accept having the homework spaces implemented and then possibly you know defer the 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 cleanup of of this code which is mainly you know we we can just not use it and it can still be there and then clean it clean it up afterwards so i mean it's just a choice uh, we okay. can do either to include that in the current milestone or to put i'll put it in tbd for now yeah okay thank you uh you have the next one as well about default permissions uh, yes that's a bit <laughs> a bit quite the same an outcome of the homeworks uh home personal workspaces as soon as we uh have my you know decide to migrate and have everything created there and no org workspaces anymore then we have to think about okay. adding default permissions so 
Thank you. Uh, so we had the, I know there was some back and forth on cluster workspace type name and capitalization and not. Um, Stefan, did we decide we were just going to go with lowercase? Uh, no, I don't think we decided, but as we have time, maybe this is a good one to talk about. Okay, well, we have everybody time, so here. Who have, <laughs> uh, I think everybody is here who has opinions. Yeah, so the, the question here was around, like, if you have a cluster workspace type called foo, where the initial F is lowercase, then you, I, I don't know if the, the error was actually showing up or not, but the, um, so you have to, let's see, the cluster workspace type's name is expected to be lowercase. The reference to it is expected to be uppercase. And that seemed potentially a little strange that there is a mismatch between the capitalization of the name of the type and how you refer to it. I know, Stefan, you had said that you initially were trying to match what Kubernetes does with um, things like, uh, I don't know, what was it? Image pull policy and other things yeah, where the- Any kind of constants. Yeah. yeah, the constants are expected to be uppercase for the first letter. Um, I had said in Slack last week, maybe, that I preferred a, a, a match. So if the type name is lowercase, the reference to it should be lowercase as well. So um, I think that's what we're trying to decide is what which way we should do it. And I, I commented that I don't want a camel case, but not enforce it. Like if you have, I don't know, uh, continuous delivery or so, and the D should be capital as well. But I don't want that users should write, um, can write. Continuous I'm sorry, I capital. spaced for a moment. Are we talking about uh, names that appear in Go source or in no, no, on the no, command no. line in object API. names or API, okay. API and CLI? So you so, mean like object names? Yes. No, object names must be lowercase, but um, in references, because those types are like constants to a user, originally we made some capital case or camel case. So when searching, we lowercase the whole string and looked for the lowercase. I'm sorry, I, I'm lost here. You said, you said object names have to be lowercase. So we're not talking about object names. What are we talking about? References. What was that? References to types. Where are the references to types? So let in me... cluster workspaces. Yeah. So cluster workspace, the API type has spec dot type dot name. Okay. Name is a the the name field contains a string, and it is a reference to a type. The type is a separate resource instance it's a cluster workspace type it has a name and so the discussion here okay. is when you set spec type name should it be lower should the casing match the casing of the name of the cluster workspace type or should which it is itself an object is so that's your point yes okay yeah, so here, now like here's an example. This is a cluster workspace type. It has a name. The name is lowercase. And then um, I don't have an example of the cluster workspace here, but again, it's uh, cluster workspace spec type name. And it, Got it. there's oh, some of the now I understand. Sure. Look. I'd say I think it, it matters like what because in reality, there's going to be two types of people, right? people that create types and people that use them to create workspaces. Like it's very rare for an admin to be creating a new type and creating a workspace of their own. Um, what we think. And so I'd say almost like if if there's good UX for like which types can I choose, whatever that outputs, 
you know, if we can make that consistent with the way that is cased, it should be fine. I, I think I agree with Andy. I think since we're talking about references to objects, the, the right, case... but the user doesn't know that they're objects, and there's no like the user is not going to have administrative privileges to list all cluster workspace types. Well, Steve, in the past, the user didn't know. I think it's a little different because they are fully qualified. And you, we can also open them up like we can make them visible to users. And we should probably. I, I guess I'm saying, well, so a user is in a workspace. The user does not necessarily have act like RBAC to read their workspace object from the parent, nor do they have necessarily permission to read the cluster workspace type that their workspace object references. Even if they did, though, the allowed children would be references and would have uppercase names. And if they were to do that, they would see, you know, <laughs> like a self-consistent list there, right? I guess I'm saying there needs to be a UX to say, which types can I create? Yeah. As long and as the output of that paste. matches the input, it's fine. Right. I think you have why make it different? Put this, right. put I, I, them, I think so the UX, sorry. Right, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, um, we could try to make a UX that is completely isolated and different, but I think there's enough of a chance that there's going to be leakage and overlap that we'll just be giving ourselves more trouble than we need if we make them different. Uh, we need one anyway, and the references in their parent type are going to be uppercased. You know, if references are uppercase, then the references there will also be uppercased. I mean, in, in general, I agree. I think the number of times I've messed this up has driven me absolutely insane. Uh, it would be much simpler if they were all lowercase. But the, all of that being said, we need a UX regardless because users are not going to have yeah. that privilege. So, so as the one who came up with the uppercase thing, I don't agree with my my former me anymore. I think we should make them lowercase. That's my opinion. Is there anybody here who who has arguments to keep them uppercase? Well, I mean, upper case with only uh, one uh, upper, you know, case, uh, one character upper case is just, I mean, doesn't bring anything. Being able to really completely camel case as, as the user wants just gives more naming power, I mean, or naming flexibility for the user when you want things like my organization that does this and that. And then it's quite cool to be able to camel case that. But maybe it's just you know a corner case that we don't want to allow. Because having you mean when you when you override a type, yes, for example, and I mean, choose a different casing, it's in this if, if a user confusing. wants to if a user wants to to uh, to create its own his own type, he might you know like uh, being able to uh, camel case the name he's giving. I mean for the the externally visible type i mean i mean from his point of view not, not the, the the cube object itself Does, the object doesn't need to have a fully lowercase name though it can be camel case with the first lower the name no the name right. is lowercase it's, it's always good. a dns something oh, is it always I'm not sure which yeah but but on the other hand if you can put hyphens uh, inside the name, you know, then it's just a question of <laughs> preferences about uh, the case. Uh, so yeah, I, I think if we can give a UX that shows the valid, fully qualified names to use, then they should just copy and paste what's there. And ideally, we don't do any transformation. So the mm -hmm. reference value matches the name value meaning it's all lowercase with pythons. Yeah. I'd rather err on the side of simplicity so that we don't have extra code that does transformations and then users get confused. OK, so. Um, We are going to decision from community meeting A. Don't do any transformation. 
Tabs, formations, and um, basically <laughs> with the rig. Okay, uh, I'm going to put this in TBD. And this is related to workspaces. Okay. Next up. Uh, this was just the reminder that we shouldn't have admission plugins look at versions. Okay. I had a flake in here. I'm hoping this is covered by the index indexer catch that you found stuff on, maybe. I've seen many flakes the last days, but this I haven't seen, so chances high it's gone. Okay. Uh, I'm going to, as usual, put CBD. I'm also going to add a comment. Might be fixed by what was the um, that in fourteen forty seven. Okay. This one possible to use a non existent workspace. Um, I haven't tried to validate or reproduce this, but assuming it it is valid, it's not good. Um, and I, I go ahead. Is is this about the CLI? I have to read. So the CLI was fixed some days ago. So we have a check. When so this. You, yeah, this is fixed. And as a system master user, you can still create, you can still enter uh, those workspaces by manually editing kubeconfig. That's intentional. Because a we, don't, system, we don't authorize for system yes, exactly. masters. Exactly. But no, you, in the future, in the very near future, um, everybody be, uh, in front of the um, front proxy cannot be system master anymore which means um, you must really be on the sharp level to exploit that. And it's intentional that we support it. Like we have use cases for that, like shadow mm -hmm. uh, CIDs, for example. Uh, which one? Do you remember which PR? Uh, yeah. For the CLI, for the CLI. Uh, um, this one? Last week. Yes, twelve seventy eight. Yes, could be. Okay. Uh, so step two. Stay one two seven eight. Um, All right. We'll come back to this one. Okay, cube control version produces an error. I thought we, oh, right. So this one was saying, like, I just, I followed the uh, getting started, which says that you should uh, use go run. And when you use go run, and then you try to run cube control version, you don't have any DLD flags in there for the version information. I kind of want to close this as not a bug, but I figured we should talk about it first. Like I feel like when we have when we, when we're better at producing binary releases to go along with our GitHub releases, this will be less of an issue because we won't tell people, "Hey, when you're getting started, just clone the repo and do this." Why do Isn't we? There some isn't there some I default value for the versions? Which uh, it is. It's like with... version zero from 1970. Um, why are we saying go yeah. run? Like, what's the utility there? 
We haven't edited the README in a long time. That's why. Okay. I mean, they said like, hey, maybe we should update the doc. I would say yes. Like, let's, let's just do that. Okay. Uh, but we or maybe also tell them to make install because that way they get cube control plugins. <laughs> make install and make sure that your path is right. Yeah, I mean we aren't producing binary build assets, so we have uh, another issue for that. Right. So I agree with Steve. If you know, if the answer is to have uh, the you know tester build their own, just say so. Yeah. So doing make install and have your path correct. Sounds like it. OK. Uh, so I think we should do a doc update. Make install instead of run. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Uh, all right, this is documentation to need to get rid of the other docs ones and and TBD. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, I still haven't had a chance to read through the uh, this full thing, but um, was this about being able to update a workspace af as the type evolves? Oh, no, 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 it's different. It's about giving the API owner visibility into the bindings. And this was always planned we haven't implemented that but basically an api owner should be able to see when there are outdated bindings for example or if there are bindings which have issues hmm. okay so the idea is here to just show the api bindings in the virtual workspace and i think this is the same and okay. his use case was to get a trigger to see when such a new workspace comes like when the tenant shows up that he wants to do something. Like in this case, create objects via a claim. Okay. It seemed that it's a little bit like Steve's um, initializing workspace, virtual workspace, where you also can see the initializing cluster workspaces. Yeah. I mean, I think. Wasn't the background there basically like they thought that initialization would be enough and then decided they needed a full workspace life Yeah, this is, their, this is a really background, I mean, the use case. But independent from that, I think it's good to see API bindings. You want to know your tenants. OK. Um, so I have seen several um issues in ci where it doesn't seem to really matter what the test case is but it starts kcp kcp is up and live and ready for some period of time and then at some point the go routine that we have running in the background as part of the end-to-end -end framework gets a failure on the Redis endpoint and it's etcd related and you can see that the health check failed from a context deadline exceeded i don't know if we have some hot loop somewhere that's causing this or if it's just resource contention issues in the environments where we're running these tests but uh, they seem to come and go in waves so I have the theory. We have the watch cache tests, which have a high QPS count set for the client intentionally. And that's a question for Mike. I think P and F does not protect us at the moment. 
which means uh, the raft or whatever it is in LCD will go over a timeout limit and then it just explodes. Yeah, we haven't got PNF working right. It does seem to be active to my surprise. Like I can't even promise you what it's doing since it's not workspace yeah. aware. Maybe it's just doing the nothing workspace and... and that's it. <laughs> Could be. Uh, pardon me, Steve? I, I think it's active in the root workspace and that's it. Ah, yeah. thank you. All right, well, so uh, anyway, right, today it's not. Um, I, I, was, I was hoping to do it for last milestone. I missed that. So my plan is the next milestone, uh, you know, get it working uh, workspace aware. But today it's not helping you. It's a good theory. I, I'll cross-reference the timing. I, I'll look into this one. And I also want to make it like about 17 million times easier when, or easier to notice that that go routine fails something rather than having to search through a thousand lines. Um, I don't think we can make it cancel the test case though, because go test doesn't, unless we bring back my rickety go routine thing, not gonna happen. And that obviously comes with a lot of downsides. Well, thanks for looking into it, Steve. Um, okay, we have Data limit of embedded etcd server should be configurable, and you've got a PR for this. So we'll uh, get it in when it gets in. Do we have an FTD label? No. Um, any additional comments on this one, or is it? I assume it's fairly self explanatory. Yeah, I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm just waiting, I think, for flaky tests to stop biting me. Okay, cool. Stefan. Uh, I think this is a false claim. I mean, we see that lock line, but I think so. So it's about the requests which come from the Synca. Um, they connect to the virtual workspace. And if you see there, it's a long line. So it starts with clusters, okay. something, and then slash services. So this looks wrong. But I think it's it's just logging. So logging of KHS API server probably. Um, so we do this magic around the cluster and the context, and somehow this ends up in the output here. But uh, Synca does not connect to that URL actually. So it's server side. it's going to clusters and then it's going into and a then work... services. Ah, yeah. So and it, it needs should to start, start services. with services. But, I, but my my, my uh, suspicion is it's just server side. It's just Not a what? Thing. Server side. It's just our mangling with the context and rewriting the request URL and stuff. Uh, I looked at the code in the Synca and I cannot see how such a uh, request. But, and is it a, like just an issue for the display here? Because the Synca would yeah, yeah, be functioning I mean. if. Okay. That's, what, that's what I mean. So if some of you rem uh, remembers how we to write out HTTP logs, whether there's some custom code we added, I don't which know. takes the cluster from the, because we remove, we remove the, the prefix from the URL in the request, I think. So it has to come back somehow. Yeah. All right, well, it doesn't sound super important. Um, I mean, it, we should fix it, Cost but it doesn't sound like Cosmetics. it's a functional issue. Cosmetics. Okay. Um, make code gen fails and you fixed it by running make build or go build. Well, just actually putting one, building one binary and putting it in place is what I did, but there was some recommendation here, um, which I haven't yeah. tested yet. Yeah, we had, um, You'll still fail. It's just missing a different binary in main. So maybe we got to make it just make code depend on main or depend on build. Yeah, I mean we could do that, but it it does it will increase the time to run code gen potentially unnecessarily. But um, yeah, we would can also circular? remove the LD flags. Wait, 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 would that be circular to have code gen depend on build? Uh, build doesn't always run code gen. Yeah, no, it, it wouldn't be 
circular. I, I can see what you're asking. And the parts that need to be code generated. I think what Mike says is what is correct. It would be. Yeah, if you generate the code is broken and you want to regenerate, you don't want to build. It doesn't yeah. work. So go build maybe or something. Oh, just go run as fast if there are no linker variables, right? Yeah, I was gonna say if you're not putting in the flags, it should be fine. Um, but you actually you need the git flag for the generator. <laughs> in any case, I think if you build first, it's fine. So we could uh, we could write it in bash. <laughs> So, Steve, do you want to take this one and and run with it? Um, what do you think in here? Sure. Thank you. OK. Uh, don't we have one of these? Oh, this is for KCP API resources. Um, so if you try to explain. One of our things, it doesn't work. So I tried and I could uh, confirm it. You were able to reproduce? Think, yeah, the definition is not in Open API, so maybe Open API is broken. Okay. For um, API bindings. Oh, right. Yeah, I think that was on a to do from a long time ago because there was there was not an easy way to make that happen um okay yeah so, this is um yes sir go ahead yes i was about to say that this is um if i'm not mistaken um virtual workspace related right uh, no. It's a combination, probably between virtual work. Well, actually, no. That that's no, API it's, binding. It's that's that's it's open API, API for logical clusters with when there's okay. API bindings. And the yeah, I remember now. The a the open API data that's served was, if I recall correctly, not. It's it's not using the cluster aware CRD lister, and so it had no knowledge of CRDs that were coming in through API mm. bindings. But we could fix that. Okay. Okay. Last one. We fixed this with his change, so maybe. We didn't. I don't know if the implementation merged. I know that the thing that made it not panic merged. Stefan, do you remember? What it is? I don't so know. this is just like there was a bunch of verbs that were not supported, and it would panic. Uh, but then the oh, fixing the panic was just deregistering them, but actually making it function. I think they are still open. It should be linked at the bottom. Didn't he even implement the fix? Yes, I but I, I just don't know if it merged. No, none of it got left. Yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. Um, yeah, so, so now that we, we added in the fix for adding the um, update operation um, uh, is merged, but but when, so uh, doing an update operation via any uh, client go works, but when we try to do a kubectl apply or create, on the API export. So this is something specific to kubectl. It, it's a discovery yeah, or there is a thing, issue. Which is weird because when I try to run the the curl command with the URL, uh, yeah, with the Swagger Open API URL, it seems to work individually. Uh, but when we look at the logs, um, the, the debug, debug logs, uh, it seems like there is something there I haven't been able to pinpoint it, exactly where. It might be because Open API is missing uh, from the API export virtual workspace, and so if you, you there is a no, uh, uh, there is a common line argument in kubectl to um, not uh, check uh, Open API when trying to do an update. I don't remember exactly the 
but if well, you use this, this clear argument, then it should work. Um, Why would it be missing? I have a comment about open API and virtual workspaces. Mm -hmm. Do we want to invest any time into that in the future? <laughs> That's a good so question. So my, my opinion is we don't, was not important. we don't need that. I wouldn't invest any minutes in that. Yeah. That's separate from the discovery stuff we already do. Yeah. Yeah, discovery is, 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 is available. I mean, was available from the beginning and enhanced with your work. But but open API, you know, schemas were always uh, just skipped. So Stefani is saying that this is something we don't want to support this particular yes. uh, use I case. I mean, if this is about missing open API, I think missing open API is intentional and accepted. Why? Because those endpoints are not meant for uh, kubectl clients or anything like that. It's not worth to invest the time. Those are not conformant endpoints. Yeah, the 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 I is using them now. Yeah, but uh, you shouldn't use kubectl apply against such an endpoint. Yeah, the, the 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 argument is is validate validate equals true. Uh, so if you validate equals false, you should be able to. I, do I, that I just see like literally everyone who used key control before would do this. <laughs> But not against the virtual workspace endpoint. We Why? can do that, but my claim is it's not worth our time to to make open API available. It's not non-trivial, and it might cost a lot of CPU resources as well. And I would prefer just to spend the time elsewhere and document that on those endpoints, open API doesn't work. Mm. Um, I so, see a lot of people hitting this. But yeah. I mean, we have the <laughs> the objects to generate the schema from, right? Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, in fact, even even in the CRD like um, handler uh, in the dynamic virtual workspace implementation, at some point we calculate the open API, uh, you know, individually. Uh, but but. It's the open API publishing uh, with all the merging uh, based on, on, you know, the merging of, of the various types and all this, which is not managed. But at some point, individually, uh, when you access the the, um, the, the the resource, then the open API is, is calculated just for, for a given object, as exactly as it is for the CRD handler. But it's That's the merging. It's merging is messy in Cube. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, but but why not create a, an issue and having something you know which is not planned? And if someone wants to uh, with help, pointy. I, I, yeah, I would do that. I mean, Steve, if you volunteer to maintain Open API for the next years, you're welcome. <laughs> but I'm not sure it's. Are you volunteering to maintain that the help desk line of every user that wants to use control apply? No, we do what what David says. We create an issue, say it's intentional, and get over it. Which and user will go the to only thing it, the only thing it breaks is client side validating of schema before the application. Yeah. 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 Um, if, if, if it's, sorry. If that uh, you because service side apply, would it still would it still work, load this? Again. If the if you were doing service that apply, would it still load the schema? Yes, yes, because that's it would be per request. So that's that's where it, it already works, because it's 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 managed on the on the server side. And, yeah, and the merging it uses this giant pre-generated static schema it merges in the CRDs manually. It's it's not nice. Nothing we want to look into. Can be done for sure, but. And, and probably, it, is it also related to the fact that it might be we might be in a better shape to support this when uh, the switch to open API v3 is down because it's per uh, type, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, maybe. It makes sense. Maybe because then we don't need a static API yeah. schema, right? Yeah, and, and to merge everything in a single doc. Uh, so, what do you all want to put as a comment here?
this open API on on virtual workspaces is intentionally not supported for now. And that was the end of those. This has a milestone. I don't know why. There we go. Okay. So then we can review where things stand with all of the different epics for 0 0.6. Um, so let's take a look at this one. Are we good enough to call this done for 0 0.6? Yeah, there should be some follow-ups when you scroll down. There's stretches and follow-ups. Yeah, the NP6. So this is to be done, but functionally, it's complete. I guess there's more end-to-ends to do. Yeah. All right, we can leave it open for right now. I would under retake and then we move it over. There's more work for post. Yeah. All right. Um, so and, we're and the APF one did make zero point six. So that'll have to be zero point seven. Yeah, I uh, haven't gotten there yet. So for multi cluster or multi workspace controller development, we um, are still. We're almost done with listers and informers, and we've got a, a proof PR to show that they do work in KCP. Um, so hopefully we can get that done this week. Stefan, did we, in terms of like turning off uh, wildcard informers, I, I swear I think we can can close this one out or we're like so close are we did that merge your did pr it it's lgtm i think but suffering under flakes okay yeah um quota i need to do a little bit more work i think hopefully now that some flakiness is gone <laughs> uh hopefully i can make some more progress there um this week is a little tough for me because I don't I I am not available full time um, due to my kids not being at camp this week, um, so I don't know that I'll necessarily get it enough time to devote to it and reviews to be able to get it done this week. I know with uh, user homework spaces, there's PRs that need review, so that's going to continue to take more time. Um, cluster workspace type take two. Steve and Stefan and I chatted earlier today. I think we have a little bit left to finalize in terms of if we want it to be a core controller or not. But once we have that finalized, it shouldn't take too much longer to close out. Yes. Um, and yeah, go ahead, David. Uh, sorry, uh, I was about to say about home workspaces that I should obviously update the epic because two tasks uh, on <laughs> 18 this is not really relevant uh, it's uh, i mean the the, the main uh, the, the only remaining peer now uh, is really after all the preparatory ones related to to many fixes in the virtual workspace workspace is virtual workspace now the only peer is really the implementation of the home workspace handler and should be ready for review okay. i think tonight can you edit Maybe. The yeah, task yeah, list to. in here and get all the PRs linked sure. in. Yes. Thanks. Exactly. Um, so, Sean, uh, if you're still here, I know I got a partial review in on your PR, and I think Steve and Stefan had as well. Um, how are things looking in terms of at least what you've got coded? Uh, I think I'm going to throw it over to <laughs> Stefan and Steve, but I, I'm working through the last round of reviews now. Um, it seems like 
what I have on my uh, my on my disk right now. Uh, things are working. I'm through like sixty percent of the latest run of reviews. Um, I even picked up Steve's net. <laughs> Thanks for that. Require empty with the diff thing, Steve. That was a nice little thing to learn. Um, uh, so I'm I'm there. Uh, I think the the big one that's still outstanding is probably Stefan's comment around the API export or building the API definition set stuff uh, that he had questions about. Um, but it seems to be working. So, uh, yeah, I, I guess the question is, um, what are we willing to hold on versus not if we're trying to get this in and cut a release or whatnot. So I'm kind of just going to leave it up to y'all to figure out and I can put up whatever I have right now and y'all can decide. Yeah, so if, the, if you can, if you can pick Andy's or Steve's brain, maybe today or tomorrow. And so the API reconciling, I'm not sure I cannot follow I'm just a little lost what is done. And I'm not sure it's correct. Yeah, I'm playing. And the other thing is, I think take a look. removal of the labels. I think. It's yeah, yeah, I, I have that fixed, Stefan. Yeah, okay. no, you're 100 percent right on that one. That was just uh, those I, I other two things. Remember. Yeah, I worked that one. That one's fixed, so that one should be working now. Um, it's now just the virtual workspace building questions. I think that I'm working through. Okay. The what I have highlighted on the screen, Sean, is this for 0 0.6 or for after 0 0.6? I have always thought that this was for 0 0.6. Okay, that's fine. I just want to fix the way this is broken up. Okay. Because it looked like it was for after. Okay. Oh, and I wanted to add in your actual PR, which is okay, cool. Um, I will try to get to more review on your PR today, but I have limited time, so it may be tomorrow. That's okay. Um, like I said, like it's kind of up to y'all on when you're trying to cut and what you want to accept or not accept because I, I'm just trying to keep up with reviews um, at this point. Um, the Based on what I'm seeing and the test cases, it's it's working as we kind of have talked about. Um, okay. So I'm just kind of waiting on what we're talking about and like, you know, what can we follow up on? What do we need in this one and everything else? I'm just kind of going to leave it up to y'all to talk about and figure out. Sounds good. Uh, so then the last one here is on sharding. Um, where are we here, Stefan? Yeah, all we wanted to do, and we wanted to do more. We wanted to add a second shard and start the work. We haven't done that, but there's okay. nothing left. We, oh, the watch curve is on. So the last one above the line, we can check this one. Yes. OK, cool. Um, yeah, so I think there, the summary here is there's still definitely work to be done before we can get a bunch of this stuff merged and close out 0 0.6. And I have one ask for everybody who is finished with the work for 0 0.6. CI is not in a good state. Uh, I spent two days already trying to deflake. Pick your favorite fail test and try to understand, please. So we have issues. The last one I saw is Synca timing out, basically taking more than 30 seconds. But there and might if, be more. So if, yeah. Um, Any. if, if anybody is looking for advice on how to test locally to try to reproduce flakes, I would happily share that information. Uh, I can post it in Slack. And if you anybody's can put in got, me. Yeah, I can put it in a readme. Uh, or the contributing guide. If anybody's got specific questions, um, feel free to follow up. But I'll see if I can get a PR open just to update the doc. OK, um, any last minute topics?
All right. Um, thanks everybody for joining today and see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.